I want Jihadi John to face uh, justice and, uh, uh, you know, for the appalling things, uh, the appalling acts that have been carried out in Syria. UK Prime Minister David Cameron there reacting to the release of the name of Jihadi John. And as that unmasking has taken place, and according to the reports first aired by the BBC, the guy we've called Jihadi John is a British national by the name of Mohammed Mwazi, and he originally hailed from Kuwait City. Mindful of that, time for another intelligence briefing, and the best guy to go to is on the line right now, General Michael Hayden, the former director of the NSA and the CIA. General, as always, it's so good to have you here on America's Forum. Welcome back. Thanks, J.D. Good morning. Uh, General, is it fair to describe the release of Jihad John's name as the smoking gun we've been waiting for? And smoking gun in, in terms of, uh, how do you mean, J.D.? Well, I mean in terms of, it was expressed to us earlier today that perhaps our intelligence agencies knew this man's identity, but now it is being released in the hopes that um, uh, people will come forward, perhaps uh, insiders, perhaps uh, collaborators, or certainly people who knew him in West London, but this could advance the case by enlisting the help of people. Well, I, I think that's true. Now, I, you know, there's always a, a decision to be made here, and I'm, I'm sure that MI5 and New Scotland Yard were, were gauging, you know, what's most advantageous, releasing the name or keeping it close. I'm not sure how it got into the public domain, but, but now that it's out there, the dynamic you described, J.D., is certainly going to happen. And let me give you another thing, too, that I think is going to be useful. Um, this gives us an insight into the kind of people that seem to be joining ISIS. And this is a middle-class Brit with a degree in a very usable field, and yet he decided to, to go do this, much like the 9-11 hijackers. These were not children of poverty. These were children of privilege. And it flies in the face of the assessment of people like Marie Harf at the uh, State Department talking about, gee, poverty is the root cause of all of this, and there need to be, in essence, job programs in the Middle East to dissuade uh, people from turning to terrorism. The, the well, other thing, go, go ahead, sorry, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, I, look, I, I know Marie. She used to work for me at CIA, a very, very bright woman. It's true that the lack of opportunity may help groups like ISIS recruit. But at their core, J.D., it's based on a, on a view of man and a view of God and, and, and not uh, the view of the economic situation in a particular place. And you talked about uh, a view of God. It is worth noting that ISIS continues to take hostages. According to recent reports, uh, it seems that perhaps as many as 262 Assyrian Christians have been kidnapped and are now being held hostage. Uh, some have uh, said that this is the beginning of a Holocaust against Christians. Uh, would you share that assessment? Well, Holocaust is a strong and kind of historically unique word. But as a Christian, um, it, it, this does hit home. I mean, all, all human life is sacred, but here we're talking about co-religionists. And what's incredibly sad, J.T., is that Christianity predates Islam in this part of the world by six centuries. You know, when uh, ISIS took over Mosul last year and cleared out the Christians, that was the first time since the time of the apostles that a Sunday passed by in Mosul without the Catholic Mass being said. That's an incredible statement. And mindful of what has happened in Mosul that uh, I believe is the area in, in the Bible we talk about, Nineveh, where uh, Jonah... Yeah encountered some uh, some interesting exploits for not following God's will, but now we have seen what, what has happened there in, in modern times. Uh, General, while we have you here in the three and a half minutes that remain, I want to get to another story that broke uh, late yesterday that obviously likewise merits our attention, and that is the, the arrest of three here in America for plotting perhaps even the assassination of the President of the United States. Do you believe we're going to see more arrests here in the not-too-distant future like we saw late yesterday? 
Yeah, I, I'm convinced of it, J.D. Let me put it another way. I certainly hope so, because I think these kinds of things are going on. And what we were able to do yesterday through what appears to have been incredibly good work by the FBI is to be on top of it and to choose to arrest these young men at a time and place of our choosing. And so that actually reflects very well on our intelligence capacity. But, you know, J.D., this is, this is so strongly in the center line of the narrative that, that ISIS is attracting people abroad, that they are doing it through Internet and World Wide Web connections. And then, and then finally, a lot of people seem to be attracted to this for the same reason they're attracted to gangs in the United States, like the Crips and the Bloods. It's, it's about alienation. It's about belonging. It's about attaching yourself to something bigger than yourself. So all, all of those things seem to be working here. General, two minutes remain, and as we see two of those arrested yesterday in a courtroom sketch, let me switch gears now. Going back to ISIS, not reaching out in, in a micro sense on the Internet, but stepping back for a, a larger picture in the macro sense geopolitically, we are hearing reports that Boko Haram in Africa may be edging toward a, a formal pledge of allegiance to ISIS. What would such uh, an alliance mean, and do you think in the final analysis that, in fact, will happen? Yeah, well, I, I don't know if it will happen, J.D., but certainly Boko Haram has been, has been acting like ISIS recently. Even down to their tactics and their videos seem to be aping the ISIS approach to this. So I, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if they did that. But whether they're formally affiliated or not, the real growth area of ISIS right now J.D. is not within Syria and, and Iraq, where, where it's bad enough and we haven't begun to really roll them back yet. The real growth area is in the area of franchises, people who want to take that ISIS brand and use it uh, for their own purposes. So, yeah, to be expected, we're, we're, we see it in northern Sinai, we saw it in eastern Libya, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see it in northern Nigeria. General Michael Hayden, as always, we appreciate the perspective you bring, having uh, run both the NSA and the CIA. Thank you so much for your time, sir. And Thanks, Jenny. Thank you, General. For more on the terror threat that ISIS represents and its rise to power, go to Newsmax.com backslash terror threat to get the book Rise of ISIS, a threat we can't ignore for a deeply discounted price, plus a special report from Newsmax, losing the war on terror. Alan Dershowitz will join us after this update.